So before we get started, it looks like we actually have our first question. The question here is for Mazda dealers on the dealer process website, will there be add-on packages and services available in 2019 or any unveilings at the 2019 NADA convention in San Francisco? Um, the answer to that question is we're hoping yes. So what we have to do is just make, you know, the, uh, the shift Mazda program um, going through their channels can sometimes take a little bit of time. So we're hoping to unveil some new stuff in Q1, uh, but we will certainly keep everybody um, posted as to when that gets in program. Um, so thanks again, everyone, for jumping on. We're going to get started. We'll give people a couple more minutes to log on. But we have with us uh, in the room today, my name is Gino Ciperoni. I am the Chief Sales Officer here with Dealer E-Process. I have with me today Sam Bukas, who is our Director of Product Innovation and actually has been our product lead on our digital retailing tool named Sarah since its inception. Sam, say hello to the world. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Um, we're going to talk today on Sarah and basically what we've seen so far is this has been out in the wild and some of the feedback that we've received along with the leads and what it's going to do for your dealerships. So, Sam, in, in this whole uh, kind of adventure that's been digital retailing, um, this has been going on for, for dealer e-process for how long now? How long have you guys been working on this product? Uh, probably about a year and a half, I'd say, is really when the idea kind of came to fruition and that we really started kind of pounding the keys to get it programmed. Mm -hmm. and, and what do you think Sarah does well that maybe other digital retailing tools kind of miss the mark on? Uh, clarity. I think a lot of it has to do with how simple it is and the communication between the applications of the trade tool and the credit tool. And it, ultimately, the goal is to find the payment, which we get the customer to very quickly. Cool. Perfect. All right. So it looks like we've got everyone logged on. We've got a big, big group of people here this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're located in the country. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So just to back up one slide. So today we're talking digital retailing and, and, and really what we've noticed with digital retailing as it's really start to come about in the industry and really grab a hold of kind of everyone's ear. I know a lot of people are talking about it. It is the next big thing in automotive. Really what we've noticed in digital retailing is that there are certain tools that do a, do a fairly decent job of getting the consumer kind of to what they're looking for. Um, but there really are a lot of gaps in the process and those gaps kind of boil down to dealers or I'm sorry, not dealers, but vendors or everybody in the community not truly understanding what customers are actually looking for when they get to a dealer website. So we're going to cover that today, show you a few things that we've noticed, um, and then um, hopefully get you guys back out there selling cars ending in the year strong. So uh, as we just mentioned, my name is Gino Ciperoni, uh, CSO here at Dealer E-Process. With me today also is Sam Bukas, Director of Product Innovation, Head of the SARA Digital Retailing Project. So. In looking at Sarah, and like Sam just mentioned, we've been building this tool for at least a year and a half now. In looking at Sarah, we always wanted to create tools here at Dealery Process that solve a problem. And the problems that we've noticed in the industry today that plagues every dealer and every website, doesn't matter who your provider is, can be summed up kind of simply with this image right here. Automotive website traffic has been going up over the years, which is good. However, web form leads have kind of started to take a dive. Sam, what, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? The problem is a lot of the leads on the websites now, we've been playing a game for years where we try to figure out exactly how we want to get in front of the customer. And we come up with convention, naming conventions that might not always fit everyone's needs. And a lot of the needs are what's my payment going to be specific to my information and my details? Exactly. So in what Sam just kind of summed up there, we asked ourselves, why is this happening? Why are we seeing more traffic coming to sites, but fewer web form leads um, being filled out? And ultimately what it boils down to is that as the industry, we're not adapting to how consumer shopping behaviors are changing. And let me give you guys a quick example of what I mean by that. So let's say we have three different shoppers coming to your website. We have Sam, we have Linda, and we have Eileen. Sam, Linda, and Eileen are all in the market for a 2019 Toyota Highlander. Now, traditionally, when we've wanted to get leads from these customers, we've enticed them with something like a get e-price button. And actually, dealer process, we what's funny is we were the first of the industry with the e-price button. It worked really well. Everybody followed suit. And all the e-price button was was a simple lead form like we see right here that would then give the customer 
some sort of a discounted price. You know, in this case here, the Anderson price, something to ultimately entice them to come into the store and buy the car. That worked pretty well for a while, but here's the problem, especially with today's consumers. The problem is 99.9% .9 of car buyers are not looking necessarily for a price, they're looking for a payment. That $39,940 doesn't really give the customer the answer they're looking for unless that customer happens to be a cash buyer. If I'm a cash buyer as a consumer, I know I'm going to have to come to the table with a check for $39,940 and the site told me exactly what I needed. But if I'm like every other buyer out there, that $39,940 from a payment standpoint to me doesn't really tell me whether or not I can actually afford this purchase. So we picked up on that and we went through a couple different iterations. Um, we tried to deliver that payment to the customer to help get them that answer. So we came up with things like get lease payment or get finance. And that ended up being just another lead form like we see right here. But this led us to another problem. The problem with having just a standardized some you know, payment lead form on the website is that when you look at our three buyers here, they're all very different. Sam's in a fairly decent credit position. He's got $2,500 for his down payment. His trade in equity is $3,450. He's looking for a 36-month lease. Linda is in a better payment position for credit. She has uh, you know, $1,500 down. Her trade in's better, but she's looking to purchase on a 60-month term. And Eileen, totally the opposite, kind of a little bit of a rat, bad credit, no down payment, negative equity. She wants a long-term lease, or I'm sorry, a long-term purchase. So if we try to offer a payment online to these consumers, which is again, what they're all looking for, that's the answer they need if they can determine whether or not they can buy the car, they all qualify for different payments based on this one price. So this one price really no longer satisfies the customer's needs, which is why we've started to see these lead forms dip. If I fill out the e-price lead form on the website and it just gives me $39,940, I don't know what that means to me in terms of payments. So in developing Sarah and in looking at digital retailing in the industry in general, we've been asking ourselves, how do we give that accurate payment online? How do you take those three very different shoppers and put them into their own individualized payment processing system online so that we can come up with a full boat um, accurate payment for them before they even walk in the store. And we realized we needed the following ingredients in order to do that. We need to be able to get that customer's real-time credit score, preferably via soft pull technology. Soft pull technology allows us to get a customer's real-time credit score without asking for their social or their date of birth, which that sensitive information causes lead volume to decrease even further. But without a real credit score, we don't know what payment a person can actually qualify for. So that was first and foremost. Second, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we get an accurate trade-in value online that also matches the book that you're using in the store so that when somebody comes into your dealership with that trade-in value, it matches what they would have gotten had they just driven to you and asked for evaluation in person. So that was a crucial piece of the puzzle. We also need to take that information and be able to perform an equity calculation because it's not enough to just tell a consumer that their car is worth 10 grand without knowing that they owe 12 on it. If they have a negative equity or in a negative equity position, that's obviously going to affect the purchase. So we need to have that data in there too. You obviously also need rebates and incentives, whatever that customer would qualify for. We then have to pull in bank data from captive lenders to make sure that any offer that a person could qualify for from whichever lending institution they choose or that you work with is presented to them. We need to know if it's police and finance, and then obviously we need to know the terms. So this was a massive undertaking for us to kind of put together. That's why it's taken so long to really get said. And Sam, I want you to comment on this a little bit. Yeah, so the top three are really my kind of favorites to discuss because as we looked at the space and we looked at what other people were trying to accomplish with this same uh, type of program, they were simply asking very easy questions. What's your estimated payoff? What's your estimated credit score? Now, that might seem like a very simple method versus doing a soft poll or actually doing an equity calculation, and it is, but the problem is, is it's setting the dealerships up for failure because what will happen is if you ask someone their estimated credit score, it's probably not going to be 100% accurate. If you ask someone their estimated payoff, not everybody just keeps that with them at all times to know, oh, hey, I owe $5,000. So if you're starting with bad data in, you're going to get bad data out. And now you're going to give unrealistic payment expectations to consumers. 
So the position we were in when doing this, we had these top three already kind of solved with our e-auto appraise and e-credit app tools. So that put us in a really great position to create the SARA application. Right. And that's why we feel Sarah is the best tool to, to kind of answer what that consumer is looking for. And the nice thing about Sarah is it takes care of all of those things we just saw and actually does it through uh, three tools in one is what we call it. So that soft credit pull technology is built off of a tool we've had for years called eCredit app. Um, we have our own trade-in tool. The way these tools kind of systematically talk to each other, take the customer through the um, kind of find my payment process really helps us solidify what we need to do to ultimately get a person the payments that they're looking for and at the same time increase lead value into the dealership. So what I want to do is I'm going to turn this over to Sam and have Sam walk us through his tool. Let me pull this up for you, Sam. To show everyone exactly kind of how Sarah works and how we ultimately use it to drive greater lead volume into the store. Perfect. So we started here, we kind of have a nice, easy, simple layout so that the consumer can enter the application in, in a magnitude of different ways. Not everybody is going to want to jump into Sarah from start to finish right away. So I'm going to kind of go through an example customer journey real quick um, where we value a trade in and then we go ahead and we get pre-approved on something and then we'll go ahead and try to find the payments. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead, I've come to this site, I've been browsing for a while. Maybe I want to go ahead and trade in my 2011 um, Hyundai Sonata, and I want to find out what that's going to give me. So real quick, Sam, while you're doing this, what you just said is actually really important. I want to emphasize this. The fact that Sarah is actually built out of technology that we have built in-house and owned, really what's nice about this tool is that it doesn't matter where the customer starts. If they want to start with a trade-in, they can start with a trade-in. If they want to start with getting their finance uh, information, they can start there. And when it boils down to them ultimately getting into the digital retailing tool, all of this data, as you're about to show us, is going to be pre-filled out, correct? Correct. And so here we have simply walked through in, in a very quick manner, uh, putting in my 2011 Hyundai Sonata, I've entered my information, and now I've gotten back a range. We've got this powered by NADA guides, uh, Black Book, and Kelly Blue Book as well. So if I want to jump out right here and leave, that's great. I have an initial valuation on my car. I, I'm a little bit more comfortable understanding what my vehicle's valued at. And if the dealer I, got a lead. And the dealer has already received a lead. If I want to go ahead and add some options, which I do because I have the navigation in the Infinity stereo system, and maybe I drive a little less than the average consumer, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to 65,000 miles. As you can see here, we're automatically making the adjustments to the valuation of the vehicle. I can continue my way through the application. I can add photos and videos if I so choose, or I can skip past. It's verifying again, hey, I was looking at this Highlander. This is the car that I kind of came in on. Yes, this is what I'm interested in. Now, all of this information is going to the dealership in a very nice, easy-to-read link through to your CRM, and it lives in the DEP dashboard as well. So if I go ahead and I close this application out here, now let's say I continue shopping, uh, I come back a couple of days later, now I want to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get pre-approved on this uh, 2019 Toyota Highlander here. So I'm going to go, okay, I need to figure out what my credit is. We're already pulling in my information, as you can see in that loading screen quickly. It's remembering who I am. We find that we need to give the consumer the easiest path when going through the purchase process. We don't want them to have to enter the same information over and over and over again. Too often, currently, dealer websites are kind of an A to B no matter what lead form you're using. If you fill out a Giddy price and then a confirm availability and something else, it's kind of a one-to-one, -one and you continuously do these same steps. So I'm going to go ahead and continue walking through here. I've got my information. It's going to ask me, you know, current employer. These are optional. If I want to just go ahead and move right past and get to my results, I'm going to go ahead and skip that. Maybe I don't want to enter that much info. So now I know here I'm approved up to 75000 and as low as 4%. Okay, so that gives me a better understanding. I know what my buying power is. I know roughly what I can get as far as the APR percentage goes. I'm a little bit more comfortable. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm, you know, we're on day four here. I'm coming back. I finally picked the Highlander, Highlander that I really want. I see some payments here. I'm like, okay, you know, maybe I'm a lease customer. I'm going to go ahead and pop into this. Again, personalizing buying experience, bringing all my information. Now, I'm going to pause here for just a moment and point out, if you can see here, I haven't done any of these steps yet, but we're already pulling back in. And, my and, is. and this tool is Sarah now. Yes, we are now in the Sarah application, and it is remembering all the previous steps that I've done. We're going to want to confirm here, is this information below still accurate? Yep, this all looks good to me. I'm going to move right along here. We're going to go ahead and now reach out to the captive lenders, and we're going to assist the customer in finding what rebates they might apply for 
and what deal scenarios they could get back. So maybe I'm a current Toyota owner and uh, I'm also active duty military. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step here. So now we are combining my previous approval and the, all the information that we've collected through eCredit Act, through eAuto Appraise, and through the beginning steps here of the SARA application. So now, because we've gone ahead and taken it originally told me I was going to be as low as four, but now that it's got a little bit more information on me, it's given me even better news. Now I'm as low as zero because apparently there's some banks out there, Gino, that I can go ahead and get 0% on. Do we know if that's Toyota Financial? Not sure yet, but we're going to keep moving on. So the next piece here, it's going to remember, hey, it looks like you've already received the value on the following vehicle, a 2011 Hyundai Sonata. Would you like to use this vehicle data? Absolutely. Now, if you remember, when I valued my trade-in, I had already pre-selected the NAV system in the Infinity Stereo and changed my miles to 65,000. So that has already been repeated back into the Sarah application again. It's the experience that the customer is looking for that they get everywhere else on any site that they're shopping on, that they can continue to do things throughout the process, and it's going to remember what they've done. So now we get to the uh, point where I did, when I walked through this originally, I yeah, skipped the photos and videos. There so I'm going to go ahead and skip it again. I don't care. This is really kind of what sets the whole piece apart. Previously, I had mentioned we're asking people estimated payoffs, and please enter this value and all these things. We've gone out and we've done a poll on this person's information here, and we know that they have three vehicle loans that are out to their name. Where are you getting this info from, Sam? We're pulling this directly from the bureaus. So this is, say, TransUnion, mm -hmm. which we, using just the customer's name and address, went out and grabbed while we grabbed their credit score. We also grabbed every auto loan that's on their name. Correct. Now they can select a loan that applies to the car that they're trading in. Yep. So I could come right here and look and go, okay, current payment 381. Yep, that's exactly what I'm paying on my on my Sonata. Maybe this is my wife's car. Maybe this is the other vehicle that we own. So I know here this is my payoff. I'm going to go ahead and move right along to the next step. We're going to automatically calculate any equity, positive or negative, towards a trade for this deal scenario. So now that we have this information, we can continue right along here. And it's going to spit out my best options. What we're going to automatically do for the consumer is we're going to scour every possible deal scenario through the captive lenders, and we're going to automatically provide them the lowest monthly. Maybe 84 months is a little bit too long for me. Maybe I don't necessarily want the 84 months, so I'm going to go ahead and back this down to 72. Perfect. Now I see here Toyota Financial Services has 1.9. This is 5.49. But wait, I remember I saw I was down for zero. Maybe I want the zero percent. I'm more concerned about saving money and not having to just keep spending it towards the bank. So let me see here what they uh, what they have. Perfect. 60 months is going to be my sweet spot for zero percent financing. But I also see up here lease it's telling me 379. We wanted to always keep this in front of the customer because not everybody fully understands. If I'm a continual purchase customer, maybe I've never leased a car. Maybe I don't understand the benefits. Mm. But if I can clearly see here that I'm trying to save some money with the 0% and I'm down to you know, 558, but I still have an option for 379 here, I might want to go check this out. So 42 months seems kind of long. I don't want to keep it longer than three years. Okay, perfect. Here's some of my options, 395. You know what? That sounds great. But maybe I need a little bit more miles. Let's jump that up to 12,000. So now we've got me at 415. Okay, that's still beating my finance number. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this. We're gonna move right next to the taxes and fees. This is calculated based on my location. The zip code that I've entered, we've gone out, we've hit the API, we've contacted the BMV, we have all of the titling information, the taxes, the fees, the whole nine yards that apply to me, not the dealership. This was another big problem that we saw in the industry that people were calculating these numbers based on the dealer location. Not a good idea. No, not a good, not a good idea at all. So now we'll get to the final steps, and I wanted to kind of walk through both the finance and lease, so I can show you that anything that you've done, maybe I want to go back and take a look at that last finance one I did. It's still here. Yeah. It's always available. Whatever work I've done, we've saved it for me, so that I can always jump back and be like, "What was that finance one I was looking at? Okay, that's right. Yeah, I did. I did want to stick with the lease. This mm -hmm. is this is comfortable for me." At this point, we have sent all of this information to the dealership. They have links to this that lives on the dashboard, which I believe you are prepared to kind of walk through and go over. Mm -hmm. um, so we will flip over to Gino again real quick, and he will show the benefits of what we're showing the customer up front and how that translates to the dealership in the back end. Yeah, and so, Sam, before I talk about this really quick, I mean, I'm going to show how successful this has been with, with your own dealers that you work with. Tell me, like, one success story that you've heard so far. I've heard two success stories, okay, actually. Here, so we have uh, two dealers. Um, one is a domestic and one is a luxury import, and both of them have seen a great lift on lead increase. 
Um, I actually had the manager uh, of one of the locations call and basically tell us a consumer walked in, sheet in hand, said, I ran this payment on your website. I would like this car at this payment. I've already spoken to a salesperson here. They know I'm coming. They greeted them and said, absolutely, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, we already have the vehicle ready and waiting for you. We have all the paperwork sitting here. You know, we'd like you to you know, sit down and just finalize some of this stuff. We have a couple documents you need to sign. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the person got exactly the payment that they had worked online. And this was very beneficial to the dealership because there was no price negotiation and they made a lot of money up front on the deal. So their front end gross was very good on that vehicle. And you say their process for handling this lead was good. The too. process is everything. You have to have a good process. If a customer is going to walk through this and give you all this information up front, this cannot be treated like your everyday lead that we've been doing for the last five years. Yeah, but the good news is that the process, or Sarah actually helps your process because the information we provide to the dealership in the CRM has absolutely everything you need to handle a Sarah customer appropriately. But more so than that, we've seen lead volume increase pretty significantly. Uh, in a couple of the different studies that we've done, we look at um, one of our dealers, this is a group site, they're out in Ohio. We put Sarah on, Sam, when do you think we put Sarah on their site? It was at the beginning of October. Yeah, I would, I would agree. <laughs> so you look, starting October, their average lead volume dramatically increased since Sarah was put on their site. We yeah, went, so to note, this dealer was actually running a, a pretty good kind of website setup. They had noticed that all of these similar lead forms we're doing the same thing. So they went down to kind of a one button piece and kind of left it up to the customer, more of an ask a question kind of uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. And they saw a really good change in that when they made that. But where they were missing the mark was the payments. People again wanted payments. Right. So they had already fixed their lead problem and increased it. And when we added Sarah, it complemented it even better, more mm -hmm. than anybody could have expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this dealer's seen great success with Sarah, as has another dealer who I know is near and dear to your heart, our friends at Farnham Alexis. Um, same situation, same uh, date that Sarah went on their site, same increase in lead volume. So this has actually been, and, and to me, pretty staggering to see the results, but it also means that we are answering that question that the customers are coming to the site to look for, which isn't just what's my price on this car, but what is my payment? So these leads that are being generated are number one, much higher in volume than we see on average, but the lead data itself is again, second to none. So here's a Sarah lead. Uh, I want to walk through this lead so everyone sees exactly what's involved. This customer, Dwight, uh, came to our SRP and filled out a Sarah lead. Through our DMS connection via Car OI, we know that he actually purchased the vehicle he filled out the lead on. Um, going down here, I want to give everyone on the call an idea of what information we pulled on Dwight. So Dwight, here's his standard information that he typed into Sarah page one. Name, email address, and home address. This is all we needed to then give us his customer scorecard. So this is that first piece doing that soft credit poll. In the dealer's CRM was a link to this scorecard. So in Dwight's lead in the CRM, in the comments section, was this hyperlink right here. So the dealership was able to pull this up and see that Dwight was in a very good credit position, had a good chunk of revolving debt available. He was qualified for up to $80,000 as low as 4.39%. And he had two auto loans on his name. One he's paying four forty three a month on, one three eleven. So all of this information was sent in the CRM with that very, very first page of Sarah. Going back to that, Dwight also wanted to trade in his Camaro SS. What's funny about Dwight here is that he just wanted to upgrade his Camaro SS to his Camaro ZL1. I don't blame him. It's a good idea. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Right. But Sam, or, um, Dwight also needed to know what his value of his current Camaro was. So he went through the trade-in portion, and we told him that we'd give him between 1914 and 28 20,000 for his trade-in, which then brought in his equity position from those um, payoffs that we just saw a minute ago on that screen. So this is the second portion that we send to the CRM that's additional to what dealers typically see is the Sarah deal itself. Now, Sam, walk us through the Sarah deal a little bit. What should dealers know about this? So this link that gets sent to you obviously strips out any type of important customer information for safety purposes, but this is exactly what the consumer saw when they walked through the application down to the penny. We include all of the numbers that were shown versus purchase price, banks that were offered, uh, all the trading information, as you can see here, the guy had walked through, he put in that he's got the rear view camera system, the nav system, the RS package, so on and so forth. And you can see the entire breakdown so that you can prep 
all of your paperwork, your sales staff, whoever this person is coming in to sit down with, you can have this all ready. Mm -hmm. If you scroll down a little bit further too, we even include the cash offer if he was just to come in and, and straight buy uh, just cash. Yeah. If this was a new vehicle where we had some lease opportunities, you would see the full breakout of some of the lease incentives and, and how the whole deal was, deal was structured initially. Here's another used one too. So yeah, this is uh, again, just great information to have. And then here's ultimately that sales data. So here's another interesting thing about Dwight. Dwight was a, a pretty quick purchase. He came to the site on October 31st, just looking for a new used car, wanted to see if they had a used Chevy in stock. Um, and that was it. But he came back a few days or one day later, actually, did a little bit more searching. He was deciding, you know, do I replace my current Camaro with a sporty RC 300 or a CTS? He ultimately just stuck with another Camaro. But this short little time frame here and getting his payments and approval was able to get a deal done very quickly, ultimately within three days of him actually coming to the site. So that's an example of how Sarah really took somebody from start to finish very quickly. Here's another example of a customer who actually made a purchase through Sarah. We have Jason here. Jason actually had been coming to our dealer's site a lot. He had been coming um, since July 26th. Ultimately made his purchase in December, but let's look at Jason. He'd been browsing, 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 trying to figure out what to buy. This is his entire click path over the months of him visiting the site. And if I scroll all the way down. Really quick, yeah. at this point, he has not submitted a lead. Not submitted a lead, There's no. been no lead. We've been tracking him. We've been, we know what he's been doing, but we don't make this information available until he has submitted a lead. Right. And the only lead he submitted was? Sarah. Yep. So ultimately, what it boiled down to is Jason had done a lot of browsing, going back and forth, which car should I buy, which car can I afford. Ultimately, what he did was he filled out his Sarah lead, did he buy wanted to buy a 4Runner, and he actually bought that 4Runner. And he bought that 4Runner. Yeah. So I can go on and on. There's tons of examples of all of this. Um, Sarah works really, really well, but ultimately, it comes down to just having the data in hand and having a process to handle those consumers, right? And it's to help the dealership be armed with as much information as possible, as opposed to the old days of trying to compile all these different leads that a shopper might be putting in, yeah. to hit your CRM, it's all getting grouped together. You've got to go back and try to figure out, okay, you did a lead on this one, you did a lead on this one. We're giving all of this information up front. We're sending the click path data, we're sending the deal, we're sending the trade. It is so much quicker to get on the phone with this customer knowing more about them and get them in that showroom and get that car in their hands. So with what we've seen with Sarah, is it safe to say that if you adapt to how consumers are shopping online these days, you'll sell more cars? I would say that is the first thing. So far our data has been uh, backing that up. So um, we want to we wanna end it here. I know you, that everyone's time is very, very sensitive. I want to open it up to questions now. It looks like we've already gotten a few that have been uh, coming in as we've gone through this. So let's start right away. Uh, one question was, how does this work with Nissan's brand allowance pricing guidelines? Nissan's brand allowance pricing guidelines. Um, trying to remember the ins and outs of that one. Do we have Caroline available on that? Because that is just simply the showing of the MSRP. I know that you have to, if you're doing special pricing, um, on Nissan vehicles, you have to have it advertised with certain stock numbers. The, the good news about this is we are mapped to your inventory, specifically to what you have in your inventory feed for your selling price and for the MSRP. So what we're going to do is we're automatically going to send all of the information that we need for rebates or anything else that they apply for, and we haven't run into any issues with Nissan yet because we're using clean numbers. Uh, yes, we actually have a Nissan dealer using it currently. Uh, Paul Hank and Nissan is, was the first Nissan dealer to run this. Yeah. Again, the advertising guidelines between what's on your SRP and BDP are a little bit different because what's happening here is, again, we're mapping to the clean information. We're not adding in any rebates before we have the customer information. It is a clean MSRP and clean selling. So it allows you to enter your consumer information and move right along with no issue. So we have another question that came in, Sam. I know I, You might know who this is from. I'm not going to tell you the name. How guess. is this going to work with Canadian dealers? It's got to be Mike or Brian. Uh, it's, Mike. it's our good friend Mike. <laughs> so the way it's going to work with Canadian dealers is we're currently looking into our options for, for different banks. Um, obviously, we will have to revert to um, a manual input for the credit information. Credit out in Canada is handled a little bit differently than it is here in the States, um, but we are essentially set up to obtain that data to give them that kind of same deal scenario spit out 
of like, hey, here's what my range is, and then we can provide them with the appropriate bank offers that apply to them. Mm -hmm. And Greg actually asked the same question. So, um, guys, I hope that uh, satisfied your questions. I actually have a question for you, Sam. I mean, we know digital retailing is all the buzz in the industry. We know NADA is coming up next month. There are 30 plus digital retailing tools out there. For the dealers on this call, what is their checklist? What are the three to five things they should add in talking with digital retailing co companies? What are the three to five things they should ask these digital retailing companies that their tool can do in order to have the most successful digital retailing experience? That is, that is a great question. And I would say the number one piece is the soft pull. If they are not doing a soft pull and they're relying on manual input for a credit score, that, that changes it a whole lot. Now, for the Canadian dealers on the call, as we know right now, that's a little easier for them for manual input because they kind of have just like a three-tier system. It's like low, medium, high, essentially. So not as much of an issue for Canadian dealers, but definitely definitely a big problem in the U.S. Uh, as we've seen, there is a big difference in the deals that someone has offered if they're a 751 or a 750. There are some manufacturers and captive lenders that have a break point there. And if that consumer, again, is guessing, you're dropping them in a whole different bucket. Uh, some of the other ones that are definitely ones to bring up and discuss are the communication between the different applications that are required for digital retailing. For instance, are you using trade pending for your trade tool and then Roadster on digital retailing and then you're using some 700 credit for a soft pull or vice versa, are you using online shopper for digital retailing and just KBB for your trade values? If these things don't communicate Yes, I understand it's going to increase leads, and you might have seven leads from Gino Cipperoni because he had to do seven different things, but that's not helping the consumer in the long run. So would you, say that, would you say that if the different components can't talk to each other, it's frustrating to the people at the dealership because they have multiple leads, and it's also probably pretty frustrating for consumers who get to, say, Sarah after already valuing their trade on KBB, and then, or, I'm sorry, not Sarah, but another digital retailing tool, and ask them again, What's your trade value? Very much so. And especially ones that are in programs where leads route through shift digital. Mm -hmm. uh, certain things are set to route through shift. Certain things are not, depending on how the third parties are doing it. You could have a CRM, for example, that's receiving leads from something that's a little bit older. Now you have a BDC agent calling on something that doesn't have all of the information because some leads went out to shift first and then have to come back to your CRM, and you might not have the updated information. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know the goal is when a lead comes in, the BDC is to pick up the phone. Right. So why are we waiting for three, four, five, six leads to trickle in when we can just send them one large super lead and they have all the information that they need? So going back to that question I asked, the three to five things, number one is a soft hold. Yep. Number two is make sure the technology pieces that are required do talk to each other. What would you say number three thing is? The ability for people to shop by their payment. Yeah. That is a huge deal. I mean, just like uh, years ago when everyone was afraid to put prices on vehicles and everybody had called for price, there was nothing more frustrating than someone going to a website to shop and not understanding what the cost of the vehicle was. The same thing is happening now where people are going and they're trying to shop and they're looking for vehicles, and there's a big difference in our credit scores. I need to know what my payment is. I need to know what rebates are going to be attached to that payment. Like, I can't just look at $33,000 and understand that that's going to cost me $480 a month. I can do some rough math with the calculator, but it's not going to be accurate. So you're saying basically these three people that we saw here need to be able to shop by their own individual payment because they are all very unique. Correct. We can't just assume everybody's an 800 beacon credit score and that they're going to come in and pay cash for the car. Like that's not a realistic expectation. Awesome. Well, if nobody has other, any other questions, um, I really appreciate everyone's time today. Uh, this recording will become available to anybody who wants it. We'll send out a link to everybody on this call to where you can download that. Um, I really hope everyone has a, has a happy holiday, a very happy and healthy, healthy new year. And here's to selling more cars than ever before in 2019. Hoping Sarah can help you out there. So thanks again, everybody. We look forward to, uh, to working with you further.